Welcome to the fourth of our Farm to School Procurement Tutorials. Put Local on Your Tray is supported by Yukon Extension, Food Corps, and the Connecticut State Department of Education. Today we will be identifying find ways to find farms and how to approach the farmers that work on these farms. We will also hear from their perspective just how to connect your district with a farm for fresh local produce in your kitchens. In this tutorial, we will give you a quick overview of what to think about in, or, in order to identify your best approach for buying local. We will help you identify your needs, amounts, and expectations to share with farmers. We will also look at what the farmer really needs to know to begin working with you. Our presenters today are Mary Ann Lopez, Procurement Specialist, and Shannon Rader Ginsburg, Farm Liaison for Put Local on Your Tray. As we mentioned in our Geographic Preferences tutorial, Connecticut has many great opportunities for districts to connect with farms. The goal is to build a business relationship with a local farm business that can be mutually beneficial. Both farmers and food service directors are big multitaskers with lots of responsibilities and never enough time. A successful connection will depend on both farmers and directors gaining a better understanding of each other's goals and limitations, plus being flexible while you figure out what works for both. Further in this discussion, we will talk about developing a purchasing guide for your district that can clearly define what is needed and just how you plan to get it. There are many important benefits to building your farm to school program. Supporting local has a significant economic development multiplier effect for keeping money in your community. Farm to school programs can directly increase farm income, increase employment, and even encourage farm businesses to expand their acreage and production. When students taste local food in the cafeteria, meet a local farmer, or take a farm field trip, they increase their knowledge of local agriculture and its contribution to their community. It's really powerful to see exactly where your food comes from and who are the people who work so hard to bring it to your tray. Farming is a complex and dynamic endeavor. Learning some of the language and demands of local agriculture will make your farm to school relationship stronger. First, it's critical that directors understand the seasonality of crops in our state. You don't have to be an expert, but this will certainly help you form the bedrock of a good conversation. Check out your local farmer's market and notice the seasonability. Try to pay attention to how the quality and weather might be affecting what you can get locally. For example, a late frost in spring can be devastating to the apple harvest, or heavy rains in the summer could bring disease to certain squash crops. A successful farm to school program will use a lot of substitutions on the menu, such as butternut squash in place of pumpkin. And this flexibility will help you do more with your program. Second, understand that farms of different sizes can serve you in different ways. Smaller farms can be more nimble and respond to last minute requests. However, they may be more limited in volume and more appropriate for micro purchasing. Larger farms may already be selling through a distributor, so try and understand what you're really looking for so you can find the best way to get it. Third, remember that farms are also busiest in the spring, summer, and fall, which may conflict with your own busy season. Over time, you will find that the best time to make long-term plans for your farm to school program will be through the use of custom growing or creating forwarding contracts that are agreed upon with farmers in November, December, and January. Understand if a farm is interested in selling to your school. Farms are often looking for new sales channels, but selling to a school will requiring some figuring out. Finding the right farm is like conducting a job interview. Allow at least 30 minutes for an introductory conversation on the phone. Email is great for the initial outreach, but talking really begins to create these relationships we keep referring to. Here are some important factors to frame your conversation and questions. Start simple and identify a few products you would like to purchase from the farm. Be willing to share some information about the nutritional parameters of your program, such as your menu planning regulations and the opportunities for micro purchases. Remember, your job is probably something of a mystery to the farmer. In this slide are some examples of questions to start a conversation about purchasing. Start simple. 
maybe from your Harvest of the Month program, or something you want for a tasting or holiday. This can pave the way for more products. Share ideas about a product you want to feature in a given month. Describe themed meals or holiday tastings you are interested in doing. And learn about what works, what weeks, and in what quantities certain products are available. Be ready to share what quantities and packing preferences you have. It is frustrating for a farmer to hear that you don't know how much or to ask how much do you have. Believe me, this happens. Farmers are also likely to have a minimum order for delivery. Farms should be willing to deliver a reasonable sized order. There could be an option to pick up at the farm if you are willing and flexible for small orders. Some conversation starters. Don't be worried about asking for what you need, but also be flexible in understanding the farm's constraints. Farmers can size, wash, and pack to custom preferences, but there could be added fees for this. Remember that farm size matters a lot here, and there's a difference between large farms growing four products and smaller diversified farms that may be cultivating 40 or more products. You may have questions about the farm's growing practices, food safety, and certifications. While farmers are happy to answer those questions, try not to get bogged down on any of these things as it, and let it become a roadblock to making a purchase. Farms are already under intense pressure to be transparent about their growing practices to consumers. And as food safety regulations continue to evolve, farms are constantly encouraged to attend food safety trainings offered by the state. Keep in mind that there are many ways farms might describe their businesses. Certified organic, integrated pest management, sustainable, conventional, conventional low spray, non-GMO, gaps, etc. Educate yourself about what some of these mean. The term local can mean any or none of these things. Organic eggs doesn't necessarily mean birds go outside. Integrated pest management doesn't mean chemicals are not being sprayed. Mm -mm. Ask the farmer about how they grow their crops. Weather. Pricing, freshness, and marketing. Erratic and unpredictable weather can quickly impact availability. It can impact what is available the next day or the next season. If a farmer tells you all of their lettuce was destroyed by hail, be sympathetic. Late frost or early warmings can impact budding on apple, peach, and pear trees. Managing unpredictability is both an opportunity and a challenge, and strengthening your ability to be nimble and flexible will pay off. With pricing, farmers are always watching the prices and evaluating their costs, which is tricky. Be honest in dialogue about pricing. Farmers are also learning with you about what is fair and just and also is reflective of their farming operation. Different operations have different costs. And freshness. One of the benefits of buying directly from a local farm is the ability to introduce a greater variety of products into your program. The diversity of colors, shapes, and flavors that exist in carrots, peppers, and greens can be really exciting. Kids love purple carrots, chocolate peppers, spicy lemony greens, and orange cauliflower. For tastings, have, having a comparison of a dozen apples or six kinds of winter squash is educational, delicious, and can excite wonder of all the foods local farmers grow. There are hundreds of kinds of lettuces beyond iceberg and green romaine. You can take advantage of all this produce variety when buying directly from a farm in a way that your distributor could never match. As an added bonus, the freshness of products purchased directly from a farm is usually superior. It has been harvested just days before you get it, if not the same day. And for this reason, it will last longer on the shelf and the flavors will reflect the freshness. And finally, marketing. Farmers want to make a business relationship that helps them reach new customers. It is a major component of why growers want to sell to schools. Invite your local farmer to visit the school or host a field trip. These opportunities for cross-marketing can help promote both your program and the presence of a local farm business. So to sum it up, preparing properly for that initial meeting with a farmer can be the biggest step in successful farm to school programs. First steps will form the basis for all decisions, as we have mentioned in other tutorials. You need to define the value Farm to Schools has in your district food service operation. 
Is it a cornerstone of your menu planning? Are you adding a few days per year with a focus on Connecticut ground? Or are you simply trying to get started and want to ha set a good foundation from which to build a strong farm to school connection? Make sure you have defined just what local means to your district and are you are willing to also have a wider circle of statewide or regional foods as well. Once you feel you know just how much commitment you are prepared to make, you need to identify the method of purchase based on the total value of the purchase and the amount of product needed and how often you'll be ordering. As we have discussed before, look at whether this is a taste test or a special meal at a limited number of schools, or is it an item for the menu each week? The quantity of product and any processing needed will be important pieces to share with the farms who you contact. So use the resources provided by the USDA Food Buying Guide tool online to get the most accurate amounts needed. Now you want to think about when do you need it delivered, whether you can take it all at once and redistribute it to others, or if you need the farmer to deliver to all sites. The specification for the particular item would be part of the information you want to share as well. Remember to keep that specification flexible enough to allow for farm challenges such as weather, temperatures, and pests. If you were hoping for kale and the farmer can only offer spinach, can you agree to take that instead? Or if you wanted kale and the farmer can only offer iceberg lettuce, is your menu flexible enough to allow you to adapt? Remember that flexibility here may also allow for some pricing flexibility from the farmer. And then you should identify the farmers that you want to meet with so you can discuss the possibilities. Remember. If a farm in your immediate area is not able to cover your needs, you have other options. Can this farm and a second farm you have done identified supply the totals needed? Or can a distributor identify a local or regional farmer who can supply the amount needed? As Shannon has referred to earlier, there are many opportunities for getting the desired local products you want. Put Local on Your Tray has a link to a great summary chart that describes the advantages and challenges of each method. Let's take a quick run through these. Purchasing direct from the farm. Using this method improves the likelihood that everything is going to meet our expectations and it lets us highlight that variety of crops that are in season. Often these farms are well known in the community and help reinforce the message of supporting local agriculture to students. Purchasing direct from a farm might be best suited for micro-purchasing and informal purchasing procurement tools. Keep in mind that depending on size, these farms may have a limited list of products they grow or limits on the amount they can provide, so larger districts may need to re rely on multiple farms or a distributor for district-wide menu. Some of our districts work with a buying co-op such as East Connor Lighthouse. These co-ops have your interests in mind but do operate for the greater good of the whole group. Farm to school programs may be in their vision and they may be willing to help all participating districts find local products. Since co-ops do the initial connecting and purchasing from farmers, the workload for the director is reduced. There are not many food co-ops in Connecticut and buyer co-ops may be asking directors to do their own farm to school procurement or limit their efforts to distributors. Remember, in larger buyer co-ops, if many districts want the same products at the same time, the successful bidder may not be able to provide everyone with local or regional product. Ideally, these co-ops may suggest that general produce may be through their successful bidder but inform informal and micro-purchases need to come from the district directors as needed. They may even offer assistance in getting that process formalized for you. Wholesalers or distributors can help you connect with local product in a more consistent fashion as they may be able to identify and source from farms outside your immediate locale to supplement that which you might be able to get on a limited season. If your formal bid indicates that they are to act on behalf of the district, 
to identify and enter into agreements with local farms, you may be able to get great produce longer into the season and in the quantities you need. Distributors may agree to act on behalf of the district, but the director needs to maintain good records to assure that the amount of fresh and local expected is indeed supplied, delivered, and the farms identified. Finally, there is the DOD FRESH program. With the prospect of additional support in the coming year, this is a fairly significant way to bring regional product into your district program with minimal costs if you agree to commit your USDA dollars to them. Sometimes the produce may be more limited and may come from more widely defined regional areas than your district has defined as local. Fortunately, DOD is not typically your only source of produce, so you may have options to use to acquire just what you are looking for. Now that you're ready to pick up the phone, where do you find all these amazing Connecticut farms? Put local on your tray is working to make this easier. Check out our farmers directory and farm to school marketplace listserv to help you locate the products and farms in your area. Our Connecticut Department of Agriculture also has a lot of information on their website for consumers. And finally, the Connecticut Northeast Organic Farming Association has a useful food and farming guide published yearly that lists farms by county. Some of these farms are certified organic and some have taken a pledge to grow their products sustainably. It is available as a PDF on their website. We hope that this has been helpful in getting you ready for those farm visits to initiate a connection. This will be an exciting spring for you as you begin the process of planning your back to school menu cycle, incorporating farm fresh ideas and reaching out to farms that can help make the fall menus tasty, colorful and local. Our final tutorial in this series will be coming very soon. We will look at how to market this from district administrators and board of ed to parents and students, your staff, and the community of farms waiting to support your efforts. The total process for procuring local, farm fresh products will all come together for you. Success is just around the corner, so we look forward to seeing you right back here real soon. Our farmer liaison, Shannon Rader Ginsburg is available to assist with connecting you with area farmers and working on identifying products that they may have available to try on your menu. Our procurement specialist, Marianne Lopez, is available to help you create and implement a farm fresh program unique to your district and help you get the right wording into your formal or informal purchasing documents. She can meet with you, guide you through the process, and review your written documents before you send them out. Both are available to help you free of charge as part of the lo Put Local on Your Tray efforts. Their contact information is here for you to use as well as on our website. And just a reminder, you have not done so already, reach out to us at Put Local on Your Tray to sign up and get the newsletter and access to all the great marketing ideas to help you get started. Our outreach on social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram will include all your great efforts as well. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you right back here real soon on our next tutorial.